Okay, this video is from section 4.1, and it's a very important skill. We're going to talk about how to find and classify critical points of a function given a formula for that function. Okay, so our function in this example is x cubed minus 1.5x squared minus 6x plus 4, and we want to find and classify its critical points. So the first step is you need to take the derivative. And so we can find the derivative of f using the power rule. So f prime of x is 3 times x squared uh, minus 2 times 1.5 is 3 x to the 1 and minus 6. All right. So we've taken the derivative, and the next step is we want to find out where the derivative, what values of x, give us 0. So we want to set this equal to 0 and solve this equation. So to solve this equation, one thing I can do to make this easier is I can divide both sides by 3. And if I do that, then I get x squared minus x minus 2. Oops. equals 0. And it may or may not be obvious to you that I can express this, x squared minus x minus 2, as x plus 1, the quantity, times x minus 2. And this is good because since this is equal to 0, it uh, makes the solutions of this equation obvious to us. For one, if I plug in x equals negative 1, this factor is 0, and so this whole side is 0, and we get a solution. So x equals negative 1 is a solution, and x equals 2 is a solution for the same reason, and that's all the solutions to that equation. All right, so we have now found the critical points. These are the, oops, the critical points of f. And now we want to classify them. And what does it mean to classify a critical point? It means to say whether you are getting a maximum or sorry, a local maximum or a local minimum or neither at one of those points. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use what you might call the first derivative test. So I'm setting up a number line here. This numbers line represents values of x and I just want to mark off the important ones. Um, and the important ones in this case are the critical points. So I'll mark off one for x equals negative 1 and one for x equals 2. And so what I want to say is what is going on with f prime in between its critical points, or the critical points of f. So negative 1 and 2 are where f prime equals 0. But if I look, say, in the middle here, then is it positive or negative? Well, I can go back to my original formula for f prime of x, and if I put in any number in here, it doesn't matter which one. For example, I could put in x equals 0, and I get minus 6. And so that tells me that it's negative in here, and that um, it's going to be negative throughout this whole interval, all the way from minus 1 to 2. Um, I can also put in any number over here, to figure out whether it's positive or negative. And if I pick something like 10,000, then I get 10,001 times 9,998, and that's definitely positive, so I know that it's positive over here. And similarly, if I plug in a very, very negative number, like negative 10,000, I'll get negative times negative, and we know that's positive. All right, we're almost done. So if f prime is positive, that means f is increasing in this whole interval, all the way from negative infinity to negative 1. And if f prime is negative here, f is decreasing. And similarly, f is increasing over here. So now I just look either on either side of my critical points, and I see that f to the left of negative 1 is increasing, and then it hits a horizontal tangent at negative 1 and starts decreasing, so I know that this is a local max. Local max at negative 1. And similarly, 
f is decreasing and then hits a horizontal tangent and then is increasing so I know that at x equals 2 I get a local min. So we found the two critical points x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 and we found out that negative 1 is a local max and negative 2 or sorry positive 2 is a local min.